Hey guys, Jim here and welcome into a very, very exciting video, something that uh, I've been waiting oh, years to be able to do, and that's bring out a knife made by Mr. Ron Best. Now, forget all that you know about knives just for a little while. I want you to forget that a knife is merely a tool, and I want you to open your mind and recognize that knives can be much more than that. Something that I do on my channel is I try to bring out all kinds of different styles of knives from utilitarian EDC style knives to very wild and ornate knives that wouldn't typically see EDC carry. And if you go and look at what Ron Best typically makes, you'd see that he, coming from the art world, uh, the art knife world, he doesn't really make things that are EDC practical. This is the really the first step that he's made from art knives over to something that is somewhat more practical. Obviously, it's extremely ornate and will still represent the beauty of the art knife world. It's just something that maybe, possibly, somebody would want to carry a little bit more frequently than, say, uh, an art knife in a dagger style or a coffin style knife or something like that. This is the second model of flipper that he's made. This one is called the Phase. He has a broader version that's called the Fatty, and, it's, and you're going to see in a minute, I'm going to give you some size comparisons. Um, the Fatty is, it really does live up to its name. It's quite a fat, fat knife. Now, if you've watched my channel enough, you've heard me praise the name of Ron Best on, God, probably at least 50 videos. And one of my dreams was always to have been able to own one of his knives. And that was long before he ever made a flipper. His creativity, his fit and finish, and really overall execution is among the best of any knife maker that has ever walked the earth and that really is no exaggeration you've heard me put him up on a pedestal for years and uh, it's generally when talking to people that say you know I don't understand why knives are worth you know five grand four grand three grand I'm talking about somebody that makes knives that are twenty five thousand dollars thirty five thousand dollars and even more and it really is about the level of detail and the amount of work that he puts into them. And it's easy to justify those prices once you've actually seen the work that goes into them. It's not really just about the materials. I want you to think about that. This knife here, as grandiose as it is, if you took away the zirconium, you took away the Timascus, you took away the Damasteel, this would still be a remarkable treasure when you look at how it was made and the incredible details that this knife possesses. Now one thing I want you to keep in mind before we get too in-depth on this knife is the fact that Ron does not use or have access to a CNC. As a matter of fact, no smart machinery whatsoever. He is using hand files, sandpaper, a hammer and chisel made this fuller that you see in the Damasteel blade a manual mill for detail work, and a pantograph to set the frame up for these inlays. Nothing is off the shelf. Nothing is farmed out to any other shop. He even does his own heat treat. Let's start by talking about the materials. What we're looking at here for the main frame is all done in beautiful, rich zirconium. Now, one of the interesting things I'm seeing here, just looking at the zirconium, is the fact that you have a matte finish in certain areas. So basically, all the way through here, the main body of the frame is matte. Then he has done a mirror polishing on the top section, which we could probably just call the bolster section, of the zirconium, all mirror finished. Then he has carved these lines into the zirconium, and you have a textured finish inside of there. Which, by the way, you'll also see on the interior of the frame as well. He has stippled inside and out. There's not a single section of this knife that has not been touched by his hands. Nothing is left unfinished. Everything is as beautiful on the inside as it is on the outside. 
And you can really see that stark contrast here where the matte finish, it's almost like a soft satin done in the zirconium and then up in here where it's all mirror polished. Absolutely amazing. Then we have the Damasteel. Here is the Damasteel blade, which by the way is razor sharp. Beautifully hollow ground, nice and thin. Very, very good etch. Nice deep etch. Good contrast. Great polish. And then right there, there is that fuller that I was talking about. So he actually used a hammer and chisel to do the fuller. How amazing is that? That's what really amazes me about this knife. Even with such a modern, even futuristic look that this has, he is only using old school techniques to make it. That's why they are so amazing. And that's why you pay the money that you have to pay to get your hands on them. All right, so we talked about the zirconium. We've talked about the damasteel. Then, of course, we have these beautiful Timascus inlays, which are really nicely done. Very smooth, very beautiful. Everything is perfectly contoured. Look how everything is rounded off. So the center of the frame is fatter than the edges. So it's been contoured off. Beautiful teardrop style to the uh, inlays. We have a pivot collar done in Timascus. Matching on the other side. And a very large Timascus pocket clip. Obviously custom hand sculpted. You have a subframe lock on this. So keep in mind, it's not a true frame lock because the lock itself is not part of the actual frame on this side. So you have the frame and then mounted into it, you have the separate titanium lock bar. So the titanium has been mirror polished, anodized blue, has also been milled in there and then stippled inside of the milling. Let's see if we can get it to focus. There we go. He has a steel lock bar insert where the steel engages the Dama steel blade. Oh, that action is just truly incredible. And then your actual pivot is a custom milled titanium pivot done in a golden bronze anodizing. Then you have your back spine. Back spine is another complete work of art. He's cut away the frame to allow two areas of the back spine to protrude through. You'll actually feel that as part of the, uh, the grip in your hand. It also leaves you an opening here to put a lanyard on here if you want to. So it's been anodized in blue, in golden bronze, blue on the inside. He has cut away sections or windows out of the top, stippled inside of there, done mill work in between those stations I mean it is <laughs> it's there's nowhere to look on this knife without something extraordinary having been done it really is a thing of beauty the knife itself is 10 inches overall with almost a four and a half inch blade. It is a big, massive son bitch. Now he does make a smaller version where the blade is about three and three quarter inches, which is probably the way that I'm gonna go on mine. I've had a chance now to uh, speak with Ron a little bit over the past year, maybe a little bit more than a year, and he's been trying to get one of these out to me to do a review on. It just never has worked out, and uh, God bless him for trying as hard as he has. So I was uh, very, very fortunate um, that Knife Habit, uh, over at KnifeHabit.com, Knife Habit reached out to me and said, Hey, I know that you love Ron Best's work. I know that he's one of your favorite makers of all time. I have some knives coming in. I've got a fatty coming in. I've got a phase coming in please let me send one of these to you to do a review on. And there was no way I was going to say no to that. And uh, again, guys, thank you so much. By the way, when I'm done with this knife, 
I'm shipping it back and it will be on knifehabit.com ready for sale. So you can buy this exact knife off of Knife Habit when they get it in. As long as you're watching this when I'm uploading it, obviously not like a year later. But they have a relationship with Ron and can get you something built. Um, I did speak to Ron about doing a build for myself. He was gracious enough to allow me onto his books. And I'm trying to pick out my materials. But I think I'm going to go on the slightly smaller side. I'm not too sure. I really do like how this feels. Everything about this in the hand uh, is damn perfect. Really more perfect than I expected. So maybe the uh, the larger size would work for me. Another interesting thing here, I love the way that this comes together where he leaves this much of the frame open and separated. So the back spine stops and you have, it's almost like a, a, a set of stingers coming out of the ass end of some sort of bug. I don't know, I just, I noticed that earlier today when I was doing the photography on it and I just thought that was pretty damn cool. Uh, the blade does go right to the very edge, and as you see, I'm sticking my finger all the way in there, and I am not able to catch the tip of the blade, so perfectly done there. Talking about the action, once again, it is lightning fast, super smooth. It is a, an absolute dream to operate. Uh, this is one of those knives that you're going to spend a lot of your time just fiddling around with and playing with, because it is that well made. I've had a tremendous amount of respect for Ron and the work that he's done. Um, and, you know, it's funny. Sometimes you get, you know, an admiration for someone's work when you don't know them. And I, and I have never had the pleasure of meeting Ron. And you have one picture in your mind of, of who they are. I thought he had to be old. I figured this guy had to be, you know, 50, 60, 70 years old to, you know, display the amount of talent that he really has. Um, he's only two years older than I am. I'm blown away. So at the time of making this video, he's only 44 years old. And he has, I mean, he has achieved the highest level of custom knife making. And to give you a good example of that, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I want you to take a look at the art knives that brought Ron to this level of fame. I asked Jim Cooper, whom everyone knows as the pioneering knife photographer, Sharp by Coop, if I could use a few of his legendary images to show you what Ron has accomplished in the art knife sector. So I want to stop talking here for a minute and just let you take a look at the images. Again, these are taken by Jim Cooper, not by myself. Mine are in the beginning of the video. Um, I, I could never hold a candle to the work that Jim does. So please take a look. And as soon as we get done with that, we'll come back and talk more about this knife. Was that shit crazy or what? That just, you can't wrap your mind around how he does what he does. And then to take it a step further and realize that he is using traditional techniques instead of CNC and water jet and all those wonderful tools and aids that allow you to do that type of work much more easily and much more quickly. So when you look at a knife like this, this is not a knife that took... 15, 20, 30, 40 hours to make. I neglected to ask Ron exactly how long it took him, but this is a lot of work. Some of those art knives that you just saw have hundreds and hundreds of hours of hand work into each one of them. The inlays, the scallops that he's doing by the way, with hand files and sandpaper. When you see the sculpted and scallop titanium, that was done by him with a file and sandpaper. So imagine how long it takes to do that and to get it so perfect. Yeah, it's crazy. And that's why I have set that bar so high for myself that I need to own a Ron Best in my life. And now that he's made a flipper, my preferred style of knife, 
Yeah, it's, I'd be an idiot, an absolute idiot not to put one of these in my collection. Is this the knife that you're going to go um, bushcrafting with? No. And here's what I want you guys to keep in mind before you start the, well, that knife ain't worth no $5,000 because I can't hack me no wood with it. It's not what it's fucking made for. That's like saying a Ferrari isn't worth $300,000 because you can't go mud in it. <laughs> They're designed for specific purposes. This is meant to display the art and beauty and the workmanship of a master craftsman that just so happens to have a pocket clip and you can carry with you should you choose to do so. If you look at the majority of knives that Ron has made, they do not have pocket clips because they're not really made to be carried on a daily basis. And I can guarantee you that the majority of his high-end collectors have never carried their knives. They sit in a display case and they're there to be beautiful like a work of art. You know, like having, you know, maybe your, your, your dad found a Civil War uh, single action army at a yard sale 50 years ago and it's been refurbished and it's worth, you know, a half a million dollars or whatever. Are you really going to EDC that, throw that in a holster and carry it every day or go down to the range every other weekend and shoot it? No, it has its own intended purpose. It's to make you happy with its beauty and the workmanship and the heritage that it has. And that's really what Ron Best's knives do. Well, to paint myself into a verbal quarter, best, that's what they do best. This one, yes, you can carry it if you want to. And being a damn steel blade, you're not really going to hurt it that much. You're not going to leave marks on it all that badly like a, a mirror polish or a satin finish, you know, standard steel blade. So it is actually more useful than some of the pretty, pretty knives that we see out there with the tactical name attached to them. Let's give you some size comparisons here. We'll put it up next to two knives that most people know the sizes of. There is a Mixed Strider Custom SMF which is the same size as a production Strider SMF. And then, of course, uh, the legendary Sebenza. This is a large Sebenza. Put them butt to butt, as all things in the world should be. And you see, yeah, this really is a big knife. But it's not just about the length. It's also about the girth. Right, ladies? Check this out. Let's see. And again, this is not the fatty version. The fatty, and maybe I'm exaggerating, but it's like this. It's this just, it's a, ow, <laughs> it's a massive, massive blade. I need to figure out a way to do this without scratching up that knife. I just kind of want to superimpose one over the other. So you really get an idea how big this really is. Now, even though it's big, it doesn't feel cumbersome. Now, I am going to say this. Folks, it's, it's a full zirconium frame. It is heavy. I'm not going to lie. It really is heavy. But there's something about it. It has a fighter style to it where the frame comes around, hooks behind your pinky, has a very severe choil here and the flipper tab to perform as a finger guard. And then you have this beautiful notched out area here as a thumb rest. It's not really a fighter, but it really does have a fighting style, a futuristic fighting style in the way that it was built. Severe recurve here, little bit of belly in that blade, off to almost a trailing point. I mean, it really is magnificent. Let's give you some close-ups here. I do want to wipe it down real quick. Because you don't want to just see a whole bunch of my fingerprints all over this knife when we do the close-ups here, do you? No, nope, not at all. Using a brand new, never used before microfiber cleaning cloth so I don't leave any marks on it from wiping it down. Okay. It is tricky because everything on this knife is reflective. You should have seen me trying to photograph this thing earlier. Oh my god, it was crazy. Ron said basically his idea for getting into this was he wanted to try something new and challenge himself. Uh, he recognized how popular flippers were, the tactical style flippers, and he wanted to infuse his style 
into that tactical flipper market and boy has he done it it is I mean really I don't like to use a word too much but it is magnificent good lord if you don't respect the design you don't respect the styling of it or its practicality or lack thereof you should at least respect the workmanship that goes into a knife of this design. There's a good shot where you can see the stippling inside of the frame. And that is all the way through. The whole interior of the zirconium frame is stippled. The inlay work is perfect, as you would assume. Yeah, truly an incredible beast, and I'm so very, uh, you know, I'm 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 almost without words. I'm so overjoyed to get this chance to be able to share this with you and enjoy this together. Because how many times do we get a chance to to hold a knife like this? I mean, I mean, think about it. So it's five grand today. Is it going to be worth seven grand tomorrow? Is it going to be worth ten grand uh, by the time your kids graduate high school and have to go to college? I mean, who really knows? It's hard to say what knives are going to go up and down in value, but when you look at a caliber of maker like Ron Best or Michael Walker or Bill Tuck, you're looking at guys that the collectors that come to them are not the same collectors that we see in the cove buying, selling, trading left and right, that we see on Instagram flipping knives left and right. These are the kind of collectors that when they commission a build, they, they get that knife from Ron and it goes in their collection till they're fucking dead. And then either it's left to their heirs or their heirs decide, hey, uh, Grandpa was fucking crazy. We don't get this whole knife thing. Let's just sell these. And that's the only real time that you would see any of his knives out there. He's able to make these more, I don't know, expeditiously than his art knives. So you're able to find a dealer here and there that will have one from time to time. But when it comes to his art knives that he has two, three, maybe 400 hours worth of work into, that's going to the very, very high-end knife purveyors for a very specific customer, or it's being made to order for a customer. And once it's been sold, that's it. We really don't get a chance to see it again. It disappears for 20, 30 years, and it's gone. So it really is, for me, a special honor to be able to come out here and showcase something like this because well until he started making the fatty and making the phase it was still going to be a dream for me for a long time to get one of his knives for myself because what I was looking at folks I'm talking 20 grand minimum and I was able to justify that now for me to stick back and do it and not buy uh, 10 other knives that would have cost that much that's hard for me because I'm a consumer whore and I have a hard time not buying that impulsive thing that's right in front of me at the time. You know, I've dropped fifteen, twenty thousand dollars at a knife show like the Blade Show and walked out with, you know, ten or fifteen knives. And that money could have been spent on one jaw dropping, unbelievable knife like this. Or not like this, this is not that expensive, but one of his other knives. And I have thought about that and thought, man, every time I buy, you know, X Maker, his amazing knife and that amazing knife and this and that, I'm setting myself further back from the goal that I've really set for myself. Before I die, I'm going to own a Ron Best. Now I know that's actually going to happen. I'm going to own a Michael Walker and I'm going to own a Bill Tuck. And those are three of only a small number of, of makers that I feel that I must have a knife in my collection made by them. And you all know me. That shit's going to go right in the pocket the day it arrives. It'll get photographed. It'll get videoed. 
and then it's going to get carried and it's going to be enjoyed for what it is. And that's what I can't wait to do. Is this a practical knife? No, not by any standard in the world. But that's not what it was made for. It was made to be more practical than a full-on art knife. And it absolutely is. This would carry a lot more easily than my uh, my Reese Wheeland, you know, that big monster I have that's all Damascus and ivory. That's a big, heavy knife. This is slightly lighter weight. It's a lot slimmer and a little bit smaller. So it's not the most impractical knife I've ever had in my hands. I mean, geez, there's some crazy shit out there. But I can promise you, if you're around people that appreciate knives or not, when you pull this out of your pocket, you don't even have to flip it open. You just pull that out. They're going to look at it and go, holy shit, what is that? It's like you're carrying a Rolls Royce in your pocket. It's that astonishing. It is that beautiful. And it's that perfectly made. And that's why I've always wanted to get one under this lens to share with you. So again, I have to thank KnifeHabit.com for making that possible. Thank you so, so much. Uh, thank you to Ron. I, I was able to have some nice conversations with him today right before doing this. Um, uh, thank you for taking the time to, uh, to sit down with me and, and talk about the knife. And thank you guys, my subscribers, for always watching and being there and clicking like and sharing videos because the, you know, the more popular the channel gets, the, the more opportunities I have to do to do cool shit like this. So that's pretty much it for me. I will see you guys on the next video.